the Muslim Judicial Council in that country issued a judgment saying that people should not go and see the film and they called Mohsen and myself apostates. Now the sin of apostasy in Islam carries the death penalty. Um, this was read out in 300 mosques in Cape Town. But what was really interesting was that Muslims turned up in very large numbers to see the film because of what the Muslim Judicial Council had said. So, and, and his daughter, uh, who is now 14, stood up on stage with her father and she said, um, she said, I don't care what, what the Muslim leadership thinks about my father. Uh, if they think being gay is a problem, that's their problem, not ours. Uh, you fuzz out a number of faces in the film, including, of course, his family. Yes. Um, it's a very deliberate decision. Um, clearly, I mean, in, in his family's case, I was dealing with minors, and they still live with their mother. They all go to religious school, um, so did not want to expose them to that kind of scrutiny. Of course, right now, they're all out in the press and talking about their father. The girls are covered. Yes, and the girls are covered. Um, they also wear the hijab at a very young age. Um, with some of the others, I mean, especially with the Iranian characters, you know, their, their families still stay in Iran, and there is a tremendous amount of risk in Iran, especially around this issue, especially given the whole brouhaha that happened last year after President Ahmadinejad came to Colombia. So, Explain. Explain what he said or what people thought he said. Um, I think it's really about what people thought he said. Um, of course, the right-wing press wants to pick on any opportunity to bash Iran, and that is what has been happening. I have a slightly different opinion about what's going on in that country. I don't think that Ahmadinejad's government has carried out a pogrom against gay men as much as, let's say, Hosni Mubarak did in 2001 in those well-documented Cairo 52 cases. There are certainly problems in Iran. What is most important is this whole issue about semantics. What did Ahmadinejad say? Apparently, what he said in Farsi was that there are not gay people in Iran like you have in the West. And of course, this has also been endlessly debated in the blogosphere. Now, if he said that, I agree with him, because certainly the context of being homosexual in Iran is not the same as what we have in the West. But And, and, and we also have to realize, I mean, which president, not this one certainly, is going to stand, um, or George Bush in the States, is going to stand up and talk over openly about homosexuality. So, so it's really interesting how that conversation was played out in the media. But what do you mean, we don't have gay people like you do here? Um, I think what has been debated by a lot of Iranian activists, especially friends of mine, I'm in touch with Iran, uh, is, is this whole idea of whether homosexuality can be defined in the same terms as we use here, all the categories that we use here, like GLBTQI, uh, whether, whether that culture of gay bars, of, of having a gay pride exists in Iran. So that is the debate that has been taken on by a lot of responsible activists in the Iranian blogosphere who felt that when Ahmadinejad came to Colombia, uh, th there were many other important things going on, and they felt that this issue was played out out of proportion. Uh, you mentioned Egypt, and you follow a young man from Egypt who got political exile in France. Explain his journey and what happened to him in Egypt. Uh, Mazen was one of 52 gay men who were arrested on this nightclub called the Queen Boat um, in the summer of 2001 by the Egyptian government. It was a really interesting time. Um, a lot of observers saw it as Hosni Mubarak trying to appease the Ikhwan, the Muslim Brotherhood, and using this whole issue of morality uh, to drum up support, if you will, the traditional Islamists in Muslim, um, sort of, in the Muslim Brotherhood. Um, these men were put into prison. They were tried in the same courts that the Egyptian court, uh, Egyptian state uses to try terrorists. Uh, Mazen was tortured. Um, he was put into prison for an entire year. He was raped, and he talks about that in the film. 
um, when he was out on bail is when he fled the country and he got asylum in France. His first name is Mohammed, and um, it's certainly not easy being an asylee called Mohammed in France. And he actually just arrived in the States a couple of days ago uh, for his first time in the U.S. He's going to be present at a theatrical event, so it is really interesting to see how much his life has changed since the film came out. And the film is opening this week in New York, also around the country. Yes, the film is going to travel around the country. It's also getting a Canadian theatrical. I've been blogging from the road from 15 countries at a jihadforlove.blogspot.com. And many interesting responses, also getting lots of hits from Egypt, Pakistan, and Iran. Uh, tell us about the title, A Jihad for Love. Um, it's really, as I said, I mean, there's this battle for the soul of Islam. Jihad is almost an English language word now. And this whole idea of the jihad al-nafs, which is the struggle with the self, and the greater jihad within Islam, is rarely spoken about. I feel there is a very major movement right now in Islamic thought for progressive Muslim voices to take back some of the discussions that have been taken away from us. So this whole idea of taking jihad, a very contested word and putting it right next to love I think is very powerful some of the critics think that the title is silly and ridiculous but I think it really explains the film uh, finally the first name that comes up when the film starts executive producer Michael Huffington um, the ex uh, husband of Ariana Huffington explain his role uh, well, Michael Huffington is one of the executive producers of the film. Um, amazing man. He has supported a lot of documentaries recently. He was really excited by this, and we approached him, and he wanted to support us. So he is the executive producer of the film, and he did a lot of good... good. He's a former Republican, by the way, so it's really interesting. And he ran for Senate and yes. then came out as gay. Yes. So... Um, Great to have him as an executive producer. I think the film brings together actually a very wide coalition of people who supported it. Well, I want to thank you very much, Pravesh Sharma, for coming back to Democracy Now! Um, the film A Jihad for Love opens this week, actually, on Wednesday night at the IFC Center in New York and then around the country. Again, the website. A Jihad for Love .com and A Jihad for Love .blogspot.com. It's great to see you, Pervez. Thank you. Amy. This is Democracy Now!, democracynow.org, The War and Peace Report. We'll be back in a minute.